Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Winterstown this morning. A couple news and announcements here. Um, not a whole lot in the bulletin, but let's remember it looks like Shining Light Ministries is going to be working each evening this week. Um, the flea market is coming up on July 24th, and all your information is in there for that. Um, if you will remember the senior youth group this coming week, we will be leaving on Thursday morning bright and early for our beach retreat, coming back on Sunday. Um, so that's always an event. So we appreciate your thoughts and prayers in that. Uh, Brooke has an announcement this morning. Good morning. This past week, we had Vacation Bible School here at the church, and I am glad to say that we almost had 50 kids this week total, so that's such a blessing to hear. Um, Tyler Jackson made a video for us, so let's watch that and see what happened here at our church. We had so much fun. <laughs> we want to sing a song for you. So any kids that are out there, any station leaders, crew leaders, assistants, come on up and join me. The 
song we're going to sing is the song that is the favorite to all of the kids. We sang it every night because they loved it so much. And let me tell you, all these other people that are coming up, they all love it too. <laughs> did come out one evening to help out when they were a little short-handed and they did have a lot of fun this week it was <laughs> it was a really good program that they had and the music was fun so very lively building <laughs> the last week two other announcements I didn't want to miss grief share has a dinner looks like on Tuesday at 6 at Lions Pride and then they're having a meeting at 7 on Thursday and the nurture committee is meeting on Wednesday at 7 um, I don't, I don't want to forget the birthdays and anniversaries. This week, um, today, is evidently a very special birthday for Maud Walker. She is 95 today. <laughs> and Maud, I never would have guessed you were 95 because you look amazing. Um, also, Megan Walker is today. Monday is Eunice Criswell, Kira Fossbenner, and Tyler Love. Thursday, Scott Gingrich and Jill Godfrey. Friday, Mary Furman and Sadie Horner. Saturday is Gwen Hildebrand, Dwayne Burke, and Glenn Husson. And anniversaries this week, Tuesday is Stephen and Penny Stamball, Jay and Jill Godfrey. Wednesday is Donald and Janet Overmiller, Ross and Diane Anderson. Thursday is Todd and Kathleen Schaefer, Gordon and Alberta Forbush, and Bill and Tammy Waldrop. And now we'll begin with our prelude. 
If you'll please rise, and we'll join in singing Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's found on page 140 in your hymn books, and it'll be on the overhead projector.
the greeting and the prayer of invocation and confession. Good morning. morning. Safekeeping and remembering God be with us at this hour. We come to you in prayer, not because we are so adept at knowing one another's deepest needs, nor so merciful that we can promise to respond, but because we trust in your understanding and generous spirit. Holy are you, God, for bearing our pain, sharing our grief, and weeping with us. Holy are you, God, for entering our suffering. Blessed be your name. Faithful God, you have lavished us with love. Keep us ever mindful that you keep your promises. On our difficult days, help us to remember that you are a refuge for those who need shelter, a comfort for those that feel empty and poor in spirit. On our joyful days, fill us with a deep sense of thanksgiving as we experience your everlasting love. Help us to share your graciousness with all those who need a touch of generous love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And now if you take a moment to welcome your neighbors. The epistle lesson this morning is, comes from Colossians 3, 1 to 11. So if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. 
On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Now, if we'll please rise and sing the hymn of preparation, Count Your Blessings, which you will find on an insert. lesson is from Luke 12, 13 through 21. 
Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. This morning we have a, a guest speaker. Reverend Phyllis Bowers. Phyllis is the executive director of the Stewardship Foundation for our conference. Her husband, Richard, is a retired pastor serving Amingsville UM Church. Thank you, Phyllis, for coming and sharing God's word with us this morning. Good morning, church. You awake? Good to see you all. Thank you for your gracious introduction more than I deserve but what I do in the conference office is shuffle paper on behalf of all of us. On behalf of our bishop and all of us in the cabinet uh, in the annual conference, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do in mission and ministry. Thank you for being a wonderful, wonderful representative of Jesus in all that you do. Lots to tell you before we begin today. Um, I'm, I'm humbled to sit or stand in the feet of your retired pastor, Keith Schmuck, and Diane have been longtime friends of our family. In fact, I remember when Keith was a little boy and his dad was Miller Schmuck. Anybody remember Dr. Schmuck? A um, couple hands. So you can she see the age that we have, right? Um, and know your new pastor, who is the pastor of my home church where I grew up at York Fourth. So this connection just keeps yeah. turning around among the clergy families, and uh, I'm happy for both of them. You're getting a wonderful, wonderful pastor, and you had a wonderful pastor. Just be in prayer for them as we all transition uh, during these days. There's a lot of moves of pastor's last Sunday in the pulpit and moves of next Sunday being in new appointments by our bishop. So it's a wonderful, wonderful connection, and uh, we all learn and grow under each other's leadership, and I know that you'll warmly greet Carol and Mitch among you. They're wonderful, wonderful Christian people. Just love them, and they're going to love you back, just like you did Keith and Diane. The other thing that would uh, kind of just preempt some of my comments. Um, I don't know about you, but every now and then it happens in our family that we had um, one of those crazy weekends. You know, it just was miserable. It was awful. We had a big family picnic planned for yesterday. So much for that. We had um, our son, who is a soccer coach at Virginia Wesleyan College in Virginia Beach, and his um, wife, and our grandson, who's six months old, and our other son, who's a police officer, and Jeff's three buddies from Virginia Wesleyan. Oh, we're going to a wedding in Lancaster yesterday, and of course it rained on the wedding. I'm not sure what that means. Do they say you're gonna have a lot of tears when it rains on your wedding day? I don't know. But anyhow, we had a house full of company, and it was kind of hard to leave our little six-month-old grandbaby today and say, I gotta go, I gotta go, Grammy has to go, I gotta go to Winterstown. He doesn't understand what I'm talking about. But you know, the love that you feel among your family 
is just the greatest prescription that God can ever give you. So my heart's pretty joyfully happy today as we shared a great weekend together and had to be confined to the house and we had to talk and we had to put down the cell phones. That's a policy in our house that we put down the phone at dinner and whoever gets to ring first, if we're out for dinner, you get to pay. So you either put it away or if you take it to the table, when the phone rings first, it's your responsibility to pay. How's that? Well, we had a great weekend, and I'm happy to be here on behalf of your pastor and thrilled that each of you are here today. I hope you've had a great week at Vacation Bible School. I am overwhelmed by the joy and thanksgiving as you continue to teach your children and prepare them for following in our footsteps and to know the love of Christ. This has been an interesting week in terms of national news, what's happening in upstate New York, what's happening with our Supreme Court and the decisions that have been made that we have yet to feel the ramifications of them all. So I pray that you're praying. I wonder what my grandson at six months, what his life will be like when he's 50 or 60 or 70. So I pray that we're going to honor those who went before us, who provided for us the freedoms that we enjoy, and will we do likewise for those who come after us. One more personal note. There's a lady in this congregation who has meant a lot to my husband and I. So if you know her, tell her thank you. She's gonna have a birthday real soon. And almost 51 years ago, she did all of the flowers for our wedding. Her name is Mary Furman, and we love her, love her, love her dearly. Happy birthday, Mary, and it's stuck. 51 good years. Thank you for your Christian witness and your love to Richard and I over these many years. I love you dearly. I've entitled our thoughts together, um, Traveling Lightly, and I do a lot of traveling on behalf of the annual conference, about 30,000 miles a year, somewhere thereabouts. And recently, across, as I was traveling across Route 80 in the northern part of our state, I saw this large travel trailer that was towing a car behind it. And on the back of the travel trailer was a bumper sticker, and it read these words, I am spending my children's inheritance. Parents often plan ahead so that they can give their children an inheritance a last will, and a testament. And it's often a major concern as we prepare for the day when we will no longer be here. And we want to do our best for our children and our grandchildren. But not everyone can leave an inheritance that can be measured materially. Now, I don't know about you in your household, but in our household, it's very difficult to get our boys to sit down and have a conversation about this. So when they were home over the weekend for however briefly, I try to stick them in a corner and say, now's a good time for us to talk about what happens if dad and I are not here. Oh no, we won't do that today. No, you need to know where the attorney is and the CPA and we don't need to talk about that today, mom. Uh, well, tell me, when is it an appropriate time in your lives for us to have this conversation? Well, not today. You see, we all want to believe that we're going to be here forever. Jesus told a story once, and it's recorded in the book of Luke, which you just had read to you so eloquently, and it was about two brothers who couldn't agree about their inheritance. One brother asked Jesus for help, and he said, Teacher, 
Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Unfortunately, these types of stories are heard too often in our time, and, and it breaks our hearts. It's what I do in the annual conference with families and individuals in estate planning, but it breaks God's heart to see how families are divided over such disputes. The very thought of such a thing ever happening gives every parent a nightmare. While this brother asked Jesus to act as a judge in the inheritance dispute, Jesus responded in a very curious way. He said these words, Who appointed me judge or arbitrator over you? And his response must have caught them off guard. But Jesus, as usual, knew the most important thing for this brother was not a specific answer to his question, but it was more important that the brother see that his priority, his energy, and his passion were all in the wrong place. And so Jesus answered these words. Can you, can you feel him? Can you see him? He said, take care. Be on guard for all kinds of greed, for life does not consist in the abundance of the possessions that we have. Or as Eugene Peterson paraphrases Jesus in the message, life is not defined by what you have, even when you have a lot. Now, at our house, this discussion did come up yesterday, a long time ago. Our boys purchased department 56 houses for us. Do you know what I mean? We have this shelf that goes around our back room, and we must have 50 of these houses. And I will tell you, at nighttime, it's just beautiful. Lights are out, no TV, getting ready to wind down for the day. And we sit in the back room and just let the quietness and nature permeate our souls and these beautiful, beautiful houses. And so <clears throat> we have had to tell the boys, please don't buy us any more. It started as a Christmas gift a long time ago because we have some houses that are stored that we haven't been able to put out. There are no, there's no more space. And our youngest one says, Mom, you just don't get it. These houses are not yours. They're on loan. When you die, Greg and I are gonna split them. Greg gets half and I get half, so they're on loan to you. So I thought that was pretty creative of the boys trying to figure out in advance the kinds of Christmas gifts that they bought us that will one day be theirs. I mean, how genius is that? Well, wanting the man desperately to understand this lesson was the key to his life on earth and in his eternal destiny. And Jesus tells a story about a wealthy farmer whose problem was that he had too many crops and he could not store all of his possessions. Now, I want to tell you folks, I am a native Yorktownian, born raised, educated, lived here all my life, never moved. Don't want to, don't plan to. And as I drive over these wonderful, beautiful hills of Southern York County, we live in Jacobus, by the way, so it was a nice little jaunt from Jacobus to Winterstown today. And my husband said, don't take the swamp road, you won't get to Winterstown like that. I took the swamp road and I got here just fine, thank you. But we like your corn. 
And there's a lady, I don't know where she lives, but somebody around here has a sign that says, X amount of days till the corn comes. So we come over here every year to get our corn because we love chicken corn soup. And by the way, whoever's selling the corn soup missed an opportunity. Whoever is responsible for that, if you'll get three and three and three, that's my order to you. We love soup. Well, where was I saying? The beauty of this countryside reminds me of the magnitude of the creation that God has given us. It didn't just happen. No one just snapped their fingers and made it happen. And we, as managers of God's household, we're stewards of God's household. What does that mean? What's a steward? We're managers of God's household. Those of you who farm know that the earth is an extremely valuable gift. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for those of you who raise food for others to enjoy. I don't have a clue, but I love to eat. What is it about farming? This is what I know about farming. I grew up in the city of York, and every summer I spent with my aunt and uncle, great aunt and uncle, on a farm down by Avalon's Dairy. It belonged to a quarry, is all I know. But my aunt would say, let's see, she never had a television. They only had a pump organ in the back room, which we called the egg room. It's where we brought all the eggs in when we brought them. And I would be assigned to go out with my uncle, who would go milk the cows, tried that once, it didn't work, but to go get the chickens and bring the eggs in. And this is what happened. I got scared and shook, and I saw those chickens doing this, and the feathers flying, and I had to get the chicken off of the nest so I could bring, if I brought one egg in, I was really, really happy, because I did my homework and I was done. What is it about farming? What is it about raising something from a seed? Think about what happened in the story, in the scriptures. <clears throat> what happened? There was not enough space to put all of the crops. And so what does Jesus say happened? The man tore down the barns and built bigger ones, right? What's that about? We're kind of all taught that, taught that if we work hard, really work hard, and we become successful, we will become wealthy. Is that the way you were taught? It's kind of the way I was. But what does that mean? We like success stories like that. But Jesus said, and he didn't condemn wealth, by the way, in the scriptures. What he said was that money is not the root of evil, it's the love of money. The worship of things that leads us astray. And I constantly got to remind my boys, I love those houses. But you can't love anything that can't love you back. Those houses can't love me, right? It's the, the desire for more and more and more. Well, apparently, the farmer in the story had forgotten the real meaning of life. He confused stewardship, I mean ownership, with stewardship. And he had forgotten the source of his wealth was God. And then, when he thought he finally had it made, and he could live a life of ease and comfort, he lost it all. His life had been consumed in accumulating possessions, and in one brief moment, they meant nothing to him. Walter Russell Bowie, in his book entitled The Compassionate Christ, quotes an unknown author who penned these words. He used his health to store up wealth, 
to get, to scrimp, and to save. And then he spent his wealth to get back his health, and he only got a grave. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of our possession, says Jesus. And I'm convinced from my travels, both around this great country and around the world on behalf of the United Methodist Church, that we live in a time and a culture where these words are critical for all of us. If we take these words seriously, then we can set our priorities that will bring us life abundant and full. If we refuse to take them seriously, we will never be rich in that which matters the most, which is our faith. I've just made a few comments about events that have happened this week in our country. I don't know about you folks, but I began to do a lot of reminiscing about my own faith journey. I was thrilled to sit in this sanctuary today and to hear the joyful sounds of your kids, your adults, giving up of their time and their talent to do vacation Bible school. It takes hard work to put a program on like that, but you do so much more. I don't know if you realize how well known you are in this area. Your nativity scene at Christmas time, your outreach goes far beyond. I mean, I have a neighbor who doesn't go to church and doesn't believe in God, and she comes every year to your drive through nativity scene. I don't know if you realize the impact that that has on people at Christmas. I'm worried about these kids that have come through vacation Bible school and what kind of legacy we're leaving for them. And the church, we're kind of in limbo with some decisions that have been made this week. And we have yet to feel the total ramifications of them for the future. I don't know what that means. I just know that the law is the law, isn't it? And then there's God's law. And I hope that you will become a praying church for our community and our nation but more importantly for the children that are entrusted to your care. Some have said it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a church, community of faith, to raise children. And I appreciate so much your generosity to your programs, to your ministry, and to your vision, because none of us know what lies ahead, but we do know who holds our future. So as you transition from one pastor to another, one parsonage family to another, I pray that you will stand in the gap with them, that you will walk together with them as they shepherd you, and you in turn love them back. As together we begin to dream what it means to really be a disciple for Jesus Christ. It's not about the stuff we own. It's about the love of God who gave his all on a cross. That's what life is all about. Oh, good and gracious God, Our hearts are restless and filled with the unknown. But we all know, oh God, that you have a plan. And do we trust you? We believe in you. And we know that together you will guide us in our footsteps. Bless this congregation who loves and serves you so faithfully. Bless Keith and Diane as they embark on a 
new appointment. And Mitch and Carol, as they come to minister to this marvelous community of faith. And help us, O oh God, again and again and again to travel lightly on our journey. Remember, it's not about the stuff, but it's about the one we serve, the one we love, the one who gave his all for us and for all of eternity. Thank you for the spirit in this service and thank you for your grace upon our heads, our days, for they are numbered, O oh Lord, and you know, you know the hour and the day and what it is that's required of each of us. So help us to be faithful and pour out your spirit on all of us as we depart this sacred place. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Phyllis, for coming down this morning. We, if we had sweet corn ready, we would have had a bushel of it for you here. Is that you? Is that you? No, it's not. Well, I, we know them well. <laughs> and thank you for your kind words and your encouragement to our church. Now is your opportunity to share any prayer concerns you may have or voice any special joys that you've experienced. Are there any? We have a microphone available. Uh, I have a joy this morning, and I just want to share with everybody at the church just how blessed we are when talking about our church. Carol and Bill Lutz, uh, she messaged me this week and told me she's swimming in zucchini. And our vendor and craft show this fall, we're going to have uh, canned goods and little gift baskets that uh, a bunch of us are putting together. And when they get excess of produce, which they have a lot of and sell, uh, we're going to be turning it into money for the church. So it'll be 100% profit. So I think we owe a big thank you to them for what they're doing for us. Mm. Anyone else have anything they'd like to share? I would uh, keep in mind the McGinnis family that lost Daryl this week. Um, the photos in the Northex were fun to look at and we'll always fondly remember Daryl. Uh, Naomi Latimer lost a brother. Um, what was his first name, do you know? It was, his name, last name was Keeney, but uh, keep Naomi and her family in your prayers also. Anyone else would like to mention anything? If not, we'll start the prayer time with our chorus. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we're so blessed to have this opportunity to stand 
before you, to worship you, to put our trust in you, and to thank you. You, Father, are the creator. You created everything around us. You created us. You created us in your image, an image of love, laughter, fun, sometimes sadness, disappointment, and joy. But whatever it is, Father, is a blessing from you that we can experience this life. It's a blessing to be among other believers, to worship, to pray, to sing, to dance. Father, you have blessed us as a church. and You've given us a special opportunity to welcome in a new minister and his wife. And we pray, Father, that we open our hearts and our faith is strong that we can work together and do the work that you see us doing. We thank you, Father, for the country we live in as we celebrate the birthday of our country, a country founded on God, in God, and by God, a country that you have found favor with. And Lord, we must find favor with you if you are to continue your blessing upon us. And Lord, we ask you to help us to keep our faith, keep our country strong, and keep God where God needs to be, up front. Lord, we have lost some beloved people in the past few weeks here in our church and around the country. Tragedies, loss, illness, sickness, all these are part of living, Father. And we ask that you put your hand upon those who need it the most today. Ask also, Father, for your forgiveness. We thank you that we can be forgiven and that we can gain that eternal gift that you have promised to all of us. And Lord, now as we pray as a congregation, the Lord, that the prayer that Jesus taught us that you might keep us in your favor. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Give us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I know it's Troy. He's going to sing Me and God by Josh Turner. Thank you, Troy.
Now's our opportunity to give back to God some of the many blessings he has bestowed upon us. May the ushers come forward. Father God, we are blessed to have this opportunity to give back to you just a small portion of the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Lord, you have given us riches beyond belief, and we ask now that we may return just a little bit and with your blessed hand multiply it to lay blessings upon others around this world in this area that need it. Amen. Our concluding hymn is number 181. Thank you.
the peace and love of God that exceeds all of our understanding keep you and comfort you till we meet again. Amen.